that out. I like it. <laughs> is Dr. Clyde Box here? Where is he? Raise your hand. Is he here? He's not? Well, Dr. Tom Wallace, where are you? Will you stand, please, sir? I've known Dr. Wallace for a long time, back in the years, had the civil rights and all that stuff and all that. <laughs> I was with him. I was with him out in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and somebody says, a black guy running around looking for Wallace. Some of you young bucks, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Dr. Wallace, I've got a poem for you. It says, How Come? I want you to have this personal gift from me to you. So when I was born, I was black. When I grew up, I was black. When I'm sick, I'm black. When I die, I'll be black. But you, when you were born, you were pink. When you grow up, you're white. When you're sick, you turn green. When you're cold, you turn blue. When you're hot, you turn red. When you die, you turn purple. And you call me colored? I want you to have this. Okay. <laughs> Amen. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Really. And from the looks of this crowd, you all need some medicine. Amen. Amen. Oh, I brought my friend with me. Excuse me a minute, will you? I, 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 Dr. Smith gave me that microphone, lapel mic, and I told him, I said, I'm almost paranoid about lapel mic. I was in a meeting in Chattanooga. You didn't think it was white, did you? You crazy? <laughs> I ain't putting my hand on white boy's back. <laughs> we, 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 we've been together for over 30 years. God blessed him. Open the door. I was on television for 19 years, absolutely free. And God did that. And uh, a lot of people that watch and they got saved. I did, uh, did visual aids. My wife and I went to Child Evangelism Fellowship Institute years ago when it was out in Muskegon, Michigan. By the way, my wife's here. Honey, can you stand? She fell. There she is. The black girl with the white suit on. <laughs> Not the white girl with the black suit, no. No, no, amen. That's, that's my, her name's B. And we've been married 49 years. And uh, she's the queen in my hive. We took the stinger out and she been, we've been making honey ever since. <laughs> his, his name is Seth. Good morning, how are you? Okay, where are we? What do you mean, where are we? Are we in jail? No, 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 no. Why, why you say we're in jail? Man, look at this crowd, would you? Look like convicts. Go, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you to be nice, behave yourself, okay? And, uh, what's the matter? You see that lady over there? Yeah. She's staring at me. Oh, man, come on. And that lady's not here. All these ladies here, how do you know which one's staring? I know who she is. Does it bother you? Yeah, she looking like this. I think I know why she's staring at you. Why? She never saw a black dummy before. She saw you first. Good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, brother. First of all, I, I thank the Lord for the privilege to be here. And some of you men, I want to say thank you. You support me as one of your missionaries, and I want to say thank you for that. And to those of you that pray for me, I want to thank you for that. God's been so good to me, and I just praise him for his goodness to me. And in my life, what he has done for me, and what he's doing in me, what he's doing to me, and what he wants to do through me. Uh, as Dr. Smith mentioned several years ago, we met down Chattanooga in conjunction with the Sword Conference. And we, uh, it was a burden to my heart to start a fellowship among black fundamental preachers. Now, by the way, let me say this to you. It's not just for the black fundamental preachers, okay? 
you can come, so don't call me and ask me, all right? You can go if you want, all right? You see the advertising, so brother, you think I go? Why not? We're going to heaven, too. Are you going to be there? Okay, all right. <laughs> we won't be in the kitchen, either. <laughs> yeah, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's good to laugh, isn't it? Man, I, I haven't been right since I got saved. I got saved in 1961. I was a black militant, just like Louis Farrakhan. And God saved me. And he opened my eyes and he let me know the problem, not skin, it's sin. It's not race, it's grace. The solution is not in the gene, it's in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I got saved, and I thank the Lord for the things that I went through, my own personal experiences. Back in those days, I could not go to Bible college because of a racial situation. I'm down south. I'm from Virginia. And by the way, they took our state song. I guess you heard about that. It was written by a black guy who was a slave, and his name was James O. Bland. And the reason that they took it said because they said, that's where this heart and long ago, that's where this darky and massa. They say, you know, that's, that's racist. Well, the black people were called darkies years ago. You ought to hear what we called each other. But anyway, <laughs> anyway they said that uh, Massa, well, the guy was a slave and he wrote the song and the state legislator picked it up and made it the state song. Now, I still sing it. Doesn't bother me at all. But ladies and gentlemen, you can't change history to save your life. A lot of people are going around carrying a chip on the shoulder, but I learned from my daddy years ago. If you carry a chip on your shoulder because of the block of wood high up. That's right. Yeah. I love coming to North Carolina because that's where my folk are from. My dad and mom from Rocky Mount area, a little place called Marketsville, North Carolina. Dad had a fourth grade education and he had a lot of horse sense. They call it stable thinking. And he had a lot of, he had a lot of things that he said and uh, that was true, you know. And I thank the Lord for it. Well, I want to preach to you about a, su a subject I feel like I'd be kind of taking advantage of you, but so what? I want to preach about slavery. I want to let you know that I'm not an African-American. You want to make me mad? Call me that. I'm an American. Okay? There happened to be a black guy, all right? And these people that are coming from the foreign country, coming over here, trying to change us, why don't they just go back? This is America. This is America. And uh, if you don't like it, leave. I, I'll help them leave, you know. They're talking about culture, culture, culture. Hey, <laughs> the Word of God changes culture because it changes people. There were things that I used to do that culturally accepted, none of your business. I'm saved now, <laughs> okay? And uh, uh, God did that. So would you turn with me to Exodus chapter 21? Exodus chapter 21. Look with me, if you would, at verse number one. Now these are the judgments which thou shalt set before them. If thou buy an Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If we were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne them, him sons or daughters, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. And if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. He shall also bring him to the door, or unto the door post. And his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. Heavenly Father, I pray that, Lord, that you would use me, that I may be a blessing, Lord. May the Holy Spirit of God exalt the name of the Lord Jesus. May we see Christ high and lifted up. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be here, to stand in this place. I don't take it lightly. 
Help me, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. We see here a man that has sold himself in slavery, probably because of debt. And he has to stay there for six years. In the seventh year, the year of Jubilee, he should be set free. And this man says, well, I will not go out free. What is it that made this man say that? Well, for one, he loves his master because his master loves him. His master provides for him. His master meets every one of his needs. This is voluntary servitude, if you please. This nation of ours has a history of people being in slavery. I don't know so much of black people today, especially young fellows, have an attitude. God help you. Do you know that God is sovereign? And that anything comes your way, God either allows it or directs it to you? A lot of times to show you just what you're like. I used to, I used to have bad attitude when I got saved. But grandma said, boy, you get small, you get big head on God, God will poke you through the small end of the funnel. She said, you get through the big end all right, but you can have trouble going through the small end. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been through the small end a few times. I don't like it. It really hurts. And God will use these things that are adverse that you and I don't like, even with people that don't get along too well with you, to allow you to see about yourself. It's not somebody. Do me a favor, would you? Would everybody lay your hand on top of your head for me, please? Just lay it up there, will you? And I want you to say something along with me. Already? All my trouble? Oh, come on. You can do better than that. All my trouble? All my problems? And my worst enemy is underneath my hand. Thank you. You know why you're laughing? Because that's the truth. Who makes you do what you do? You do. If you're not living for God, whose fault is that? That's not God's fault. That's your fault or my fault. But here we find this man, he willingly volunteered. My master provides for me. He cares for me. He meets my need. And I don't want to go out free. You see here, the servant is the type of the Lord Jesus Christ in his pure devotedness to the Father. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Willingly. Look with me in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 15, will you? Deuteronomy chapter 15. And look at verse number 12. It says, And if thy brother, an Hebrew man or a Hebrew woman, be sold unto thee, and serve thee six years, then in the seventh year thou shalt let him go free from thee. And when thou sendest him out from thee, thou shalt not let him go away empty. Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock, out of thy of their floor, and out of thy wine press, of that wherewith the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, thou shalt give unto him. And thou shalt remember, look at this, a lot of us get amnesia. You know, you can never give the gospel to the wrong person. And people say, well, Brother Earl, what's it like when you go soul winning in the black community? Like when you go anyplace else. So how do you do it? Move with fear and trembling. You do. You'd be surprised at people in the inner cities. I know good fundamental churches in the inner, thank God for this one, have moved out into suburbia. And let the inner city go to hell. They leave the blacks and Hispanics. Just neglect them. We're saying that we love Jesus. Send a missionary to JFK to fly out to New York to go to Africa and leave more black people sitting in New York City you ever meet in Africa in a lifetime. God help us. I've been living where I live in my house for 44 years. Listen to this. In a nice, pretty nice subdivision. And the fundamental independent Baptist churches all around my area. 
And not one time, not one time, has a fundamental independent Baptist church gone so winning ever knocked on my door. That's a disgrace before God. It really is. Now listen, fellas. You might sit back and chafe at the bit and all that and fuss about it. But what are you doing about it? You and I are going to have to meet God. I'm not responsible for what happened 200 years ago. Man, I thank God I'm here in America. Hey, let's look at history for a minute. Sure, my forefathers came from Africa. But where God allowed that to happen and brought them over here down the Caribbean and up to the United States, man, and we're in, and I, I could still be in the jungle running around looking for something to eat while something looking for me to eat. <laughs> God causes the wrath of man to preach. Brother, do you know that this is in the Bible? He said, go to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You know what a creature is? Look around you. That's what we are. We're a bunch of creatures. We neglect folk. Because of what? Social pressure? Peer pressure? I tell Dr. John Riddell, who's a very good friend, you and I have to stick together. All of minorities got to stick together. He didn't know that he's a minority. <laughs> Dr. Shel Smith doesn't know it either. All you fundamental independent Baptists, you are a minority, whether you realize it or not. As far as this world is concerned, the world hates you. They'll be, they'll be standing on the corner high when they bring your body by. They'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal, you. They're glad to get rid of you if you live for God. Now, we have all that we need provided for us in Jesus Christ. Here it is right here. A servant. You know, I remember, they call us black American now. I remember when I was colored. Do you remember those days? I was a colored boy. Yeah. And then I got to be an American Negro. Then I graduated. Got to be black. Colored. Afro-American. African-American. And the same guy. Somebody said, Brother Earl, what should I call you? I was called Brother Earl. That'd be all right. <laughs> No, no, it's African American. You know, you can't you, was, you can't say black anymore. Out there on the side of, on the street, they African American the top of the road. Yeah. My shoes are African American. It, it is dumb. I mean, God knows that is dumb. Really, you know. In John chapter 13, turn there with me if you would please. Here's the one that set the example. John chapter 13. Verse 1. Now therefore, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God. He rises from supper and laid aside his garment, and took a towel and girded himself. Now here's the Lord of glory taking the position of a slave, a servant, if you please. He laid aside his garment. That's what he did when he came down here, isn't it? He laid aside his glory and became a man. I'm so glad about that. He was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. Boy, he bought me out of the slave market. I was a slave to the devil. So were you. And there are some of you that are still slaves. You know, you're slaves to your own prejudices, your own ideas, your own thoughts. Really. I, 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 I used to watch fights. I don't want to watch fights anymore. There was this black boy and white boy were fighting. Okay? Well, you know which one I was rooting for, don't you? And that white boy was beating the snot out of him. But he hit him everywhere but under the bottom of his feet. And I'm sitting there, I got caught up emotionally. Get up! Don't let that honk in here! (laughs) 
Get up! Don't let him beat you like that, boy! Get up! You know what? I think he heard me. Well, she got up and knocked the guy out. And it dawned on me, I'm in the room by myself, right? Wait a minute. I'm through with fights. I'm not watching them anymore. I don't care who's fighting. My emotion, I got caught up in that stuff, man. I like that. Don't tell me you're not like that. I don't care what color guy he is. If he's in the Olympics and he wins the gold and weighs old glory. I like it, brother. I really, especially if he's one of us and won the gold. So hallelujah, glory to God. You know, I like, I like that flag. I like that song that we sing. Jose, can you see? I like that. I like that, man. I, I really do. <laughs> now, here's, a, here's a Lord of God. You know what he did? After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel where he was girded. Now, this is, this is the Lord of glory. He's stooping to that level. I figured out you can't wash a fellow's feet standing over him. You got to get down below him and wash his feet. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He that is washed needed not save to wash his feet, but he is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garment, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given unto you an example that you should do as, notice it, not what, do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, and neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye. We are told in the word of God, by love, serve one another. And some of you young preacher boys, God bless your pointed head, you're so stinking important. You really are. You reek with it. I'll tell you how important you are. You go home and get a five gallon bucket and fill it with water and stick your hand in the middle of that water and snatch it out real quick. And the hole that's left in there will tell you how important you are. You are a servant. That's all you are. That's all you ever will be. You'll never be chief executive. Listen, some of you guys have got your resume made up. Waiting for a vacancy in the Trinity so you can fill it. I got news for you, son. It ain't ever going to happen in this world or the next one. Just roll your sleeve up, go back home, and get out there and be a servant. And do exactly what God has called you to do. We have it here in the Bible. We have the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's already done it. God help us. First, uh, Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. And verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant. That's what I'm talking about. And was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, 
even the death of the cross. Several years ago, I was so humble, I decided to write a book. The ten most humble people I know and how I taught the other nine. I changed my mind. My wife let me know how humble I was. We should get in the kitchen and wash the dishes. I said, you talking to me? Yes, I'm talking to you. I said, I don't have to do that. She said, if you want to eat, go right with me. So I washed the dishes. <laughs> you see, here it is, brethren. What, what's our problem about being a servant? I've been places and I had people to introduce me. And my wife said, who are they talking about? I said, they're talking about me. She said, they don't know you like I know you. <laughs> I said, oh, 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 okay. Compliments are like perfume, nice to smell, but don't swallow. <laughs> Look at Romans chapter 6, if you would, please. I'm, you notice I'm not trying to impress you. <laughs> Does it make any difference whether I impress you or not? The important thing is to serve, serve my Lord and Master. You know, when we stand before him, you know what we're going to want to hear him say? Well done, chief executive officer. Uh-uh. No, no, he's not going to say that. Well done, good and faithful servant. And this is James Earl paraphrase, okay? Anything that you want well done, you know what you do with it, don't you? You stick it in the fire. Anybody here? Been in the fire? <laughs> you know what? You say, I smell something burning. Oh, that's me. That's right. When you stand before him, we're going to say, well done. It's because you've been in the fire, the fiery trial. Peter speaks about that. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that's come upon you, though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice. Say, what? Rejoice. Be exceeding glad. Be happy. What? Peter, you must have fell out of a tree and broke your neck breaking leaves. You don't know what I'm going through. Yeah, okay, tell you what you do. Take a look at the scriptures and see what Jesus went through and see how it stacks up. I think about that sometimes. What he did for me. I wasn't seeking him. He was seeking me. I'm so glad he found me. I haven't got over it, brother. Listen, listen, go on back home. Do what God would have you do. And forget all this racial stuff. I saw in the news that Jesse Jackson with an entourage of liberal preachers is going to Afghanistan. Drop the bomb, drop the bomb, drop the bomb. Drop the bomb. That'll solve, that'll solve one of our problems. So that stuff will get you killed talking about it. I gotta die with something. Don't threaten me with heaven. I'm going home, brother. I've got some place else to go. I'm going to see my Lord and my Master. And I want to have something to lay at His feet when I stand before Him because I've been faithful. I have not let the problems and the social structure of this world influence me. I'm on my way out of here. You ought to. Paul, writing in Romans 6, 14, he says, for sin shall not have dominion, shall not reign over you. For ye are not on the law, but on the grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not, look at this, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are. There, that word again. To whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, of obedience unto righteousness. <coughs> but God be thanked that ye were, past tense, the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. You were a bond slave to Satan, the world, the flesh, and the devil. And God saved you 
And you got a new master now. Listen, I, I wasn't black eyed. God set me free. Abe Lincoln and Martin Luther King didn't set me free. The Supreme Court of the United States government did not set me free. It was the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God, that set me free. That's who I belong to. I belong to him. I'm a servant of his. I don't mean Martin Luther or Elvis either. I mean King Jesus. That's who I'm talking about. You may not like me, but it don't make a difference. God made me so he stuck me behind my face. I don't have to look in it. You don't like it, look someplace else. That's a two-way street you're on. I don't have to like you. You ain't all that good looking. <coughs> Turn with me, if you would, to the book of Philemon. That's where all the clean pages are in your Bible. I want you to notice something here. Paul, here's a man by the name of Philemon. Listen to this very carefully. Who was a Christian. And he owned a slave. Are you listening? He owned a slave by the name of Onesimus. And Onesimus has stole them from him and ran away and ran into a buzzsaw he ran into Paul and got saved now what's he going to do now that he's saved start a civil rights movement call the NAACP oh by the way I, I want to say something to you. you you didn't know this you do it now I'm going to confess it publicly I belong to the NAACP I have a lifetime membership in it. I figured you'd get quiet on me. <laughs> the National Association for the Advancement of Christian People. Amen. Yeah, well, amen. Now, had your word, didn't it? Oh, yeah. That's the one I belong to. Lifetime membership for the advancement of Christian people. Uh, a lot of this stuff we call civil rights. The rights are not even civil. And we got a bunch of guys that are sitting back, manipulating and using that for their own selfish gain. I'm smart enough to know that the Supreme Court is not the Supreme Court. My Supreme Court is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They ain't met yet. And they're going to set things right, brother. I think you ought to do, listen, I, God has given us a, a command. We call it a great commission. I think that's why a lot of us are not doing anything with it, because we call it a commission. I was in the military, three years, 10 months, 28 days, and five hours. So how do you remember so well? They tried to kill me. You don't forget that. And there were guys that received a battlefield commission. You see a guy, he's a sergeant today, 30 days to 90 days later. You see him, he's a lieutenant, he's a shave tail. He received a battlefield commission. But there were guys also that they offered it to them, and they refused to take it. They couldn't pass a law to make a guy accept a battlefield commission. So I brought that over to my Christian life. That's why a lot of us are dragging our feet. We call it a commission. You know what? You can accept it or reject it. But listen, beloved, when you receive a command in time of war, and by the way, we're in time of war. We're in war now, the world of flesh and the devil. When God commands us to do something, we don't have any option but to obey it. So we're sitting back now, relaxed, talking about it's a great commission. No, it's a great command. Because Jesus said, do whatsoever I commission you, no. Do whatsoever I command you. I don't know Greek and Hebrew. I got a problem with English. That's my problem. Really. And uh, you pardon me, but I'm prejudiced to the old authorized 1611 King James. That's me. And these guys told all these tra Do you, I got one that's coming up. You haven't seen it yet? Listen to this. There's a Bible out called the Rapper's Bible. It's for black people only. I'm serious. I try. And I don't need the HIV positive. I mean the NIV. Sorry about that. <laughs> There's no cure for either one of them. You give, give, give me another one. When I've gone through this one, and this one has gone through me, okay? Then I'll need another one, all right? But don't rewrite it. Leave it like it is. The guys are arguing about uh, how did God 
<laughs> you forgive me. How did God preserve his word? He said so. I ain't got no problem with that. They got a thing coming out now. It's called the openness of God. God doesn't know everything. He got to wait for something to happen so he can determine what to do about it. That must be Allah. That ain't the God of my Bible. God knows, my Bible says God knows the end from the beginning. He inhabits eternity. Nothing catches God by surprise. Philemon, Paul writing says, Paul, prisoner, I like that, of Jesus Christ. Now this ought to strike a note with Philemon because Philemon is familiar with this. He had a slave. But Paul does not appeal for him to him, his friend Philemon, out of his apostleship. He didn't command a thing. This, this is a love letter. Boy, I tell you, you get your heart right with God to sit down and read this, you'll cry all over the page, water all over the pages. Look at what he said. Uh, a prisoner of Jesus Christ and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved and fellow laborer, and to our beloved Aphia and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God making mention of ye always in my prayers, hearing of thy love and faith which thou hast toward the Lord Jesus and toward all saints, that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good work, every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though, though I might be uh, more bo much bold in Christ to enjoin thee that, that which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such an, a one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds. He says, my son, but these are affectionate terms. This is my son. I've begotten him in my bonds. Paul reached this man, Onesimus, a runaway slave, if you please. Paul is writing this epistle to his friend, Philemon, on behalf of a runaway slave by the name of Onesimus, which, he, which in time, look at this, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. Glory, hallelujah. I look back over my past life. I wasn't profitable to anybody. Now, I, I'm the oldest of, of seven children, five boys and two girls. Now, I mean this. I'm the one, literally, the black sheep in the family. Don't you dare laugh. And don't you dare call me that either. But anyway, really, I was. I was the one most likely not to do anything. I was lost. Because of my wife, I got saved. She got saved listening to the radio and heard Oliver B. Green preaching. And then I got saved watching my wife live. She didn't worry me to death. She prayed for me. I couldn't figure that woman out. I look in her eyes, I see, I see the lights on, but ain't nobody at home in there. The way she loved me. I told her, I said, you know, I wish you were like that now. She said, I've been married to you all these years. That was changed me. <laughs> she prayed for me. I get ready to go out. You know what? She'd lay my clothes out like a valet. And kiss me at the door and say, have a good time. I'm praying for you. Ah, why? That girl playing the game when she ain't got no marbles. I couldn't figure that out. You know what it was? It was the love. It was the love. 
She said to me, I was in the Presbyterian church singing in the choir, studying to become a Roman Catholic and a black militant. I was messed up. I always go first class, don't I? I don't fool around. You go and go all the way. And she said one thing. You know why? It's so easy to be saved. And that bothered me. I didn't know what she meant. But I found out. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I called upon the name of the Lord. I was at home sitting in the living room. She was asleep. God let some people go to sleep so he can get the work done. She fell asleep sitting beside me. I heard John 3.16. That was it. He said, I, got, I got saved before I found out what a Roman road was. Didn't even know where it was. Didn't know anything about theology, eschatology, soteriology. I got saved. God called me to preach. Come to find. I thought it was stuff you put on your grits. I didn't know. <laughs> but I learned how. Sitting by the radio, listening to fellows like Oliver Green, G. Christian Weiss, Odd Morrow, Peter Webb, Don Gray Bonhouse, Charles Fuller, M.R. D. Hahn. I listened to the old great sitting by the radio. Worked for the federal government and got paid for listening to the radio eight hours a day. Good sound preaching. Then I had meetings in the area. Fella come to the area. I wouldn't charge and I called and asked. I was colored back in those days. I said, hey, I'm colored. Can I come to the meeting? If I can't, I'll pray for it. Come on, brother. Say amen. I, went. I was in that crowd. Like at the Southwide Baptist Fellowship, I looked like a fly in a bowl of milk in that crowd. <laughs> Man, those guys were waxing elephants and eloquent. I loved it. Man, I met that crowd. Where all these guys come from? But when I got there, you know what? I looked around. I was so lonesome. I found myself a lot of time the only black guy in these areas. You know what God was doing? He was shaping and molding my life and working in my heart. I didn't have smarts enough to know it. But I found it out. I did. You know how I found it out? He poked me through the small end of the funnel. Yeah. I got to the place I told God, I said, listen, even when I started the church with black people, my own people, I had to fight them to teach them, brother. They want to know. This, this, they sit in fuss. This ain't no black church. Why? This ain't no black music. This white folk music. I said, hey, what color's music? Everybody, <laughs> get a hymn book. Open it. I don't care which one you turn to. Now look at the black notes on top of the white page we're singing in the black. That's the way it's going to be in here. We ain't going to have that. Uh-uh, 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 not in here. No way. No, uh-uh. The original swinkles of monkeys, apes, and gorillas. Ain't none of them in here. We're not going to have that. And the sad part, listen, the sad part that breaks my heart, that that kind of rubbish is coming in the good fundamental independent Baptist churches. I call it spirit chunky music. When I hear that jump, I want to take off my clothes, put on a lawn claw, paint my face, and chuck spears at white folk. That's what that is. That doesn't glorify God in any kind of way. It ain't over till the fat lady sings. God help us. God help us. And this stuff, uh, give God a hand. For what? He ain't going to ask one of you and yours. God help us. You, listen, you, you don't infiltrate and cooperate. You isolate yourself from that stuff because God insulates you. They don't invite me to the minister's assassination. They had me preach at the mayor's prayer breakfast one time. You see, our mayor is the black guy. And somehow they got my name. Why don't you come preach at the mayor's prayer breakfast? Give the Invocation and benediction. I said, before I give the invocation, let me say something. I had all of them sit down. And I preached the hide off that crowd and gave the, gave the gospel and gave the invitation to accept Christ as personal Savior. 
you could pray, you could hear a pin fall on a bale of cotton in that meeting. They never had me come back again. I wonder why. Paul, writing this letter, sent Onesimus right back where he came from. They both say, as master, slave owner, and slave. As what? Brethren. And God tells us in his word how to treat each other in Ephesians chapter 6. How, how that the servant ought to submit himself or herself to the master who's the supervisor or whatever you call them as serving the Lord. I was in a meeting one time and I said, how many people go to work regularly late as, that are saved? Several hands went up. I said, I wish I knew where you work. I'd call them and tell them to fire you. Give you your check, your last check. You're not worth the salt in your bread. To always go to work late. What God did for us, he did in time and on time. Now in my area where I live, it's always something of either break down in a tunnel, a, a, a bridge go up, or a train go by. So I used to sit there in the first. Sit in the counting car, 98, 99, 100, 2, 3, 4. You know what I decided to do? Put my car in park, turn it off, put the key in my pocket, and open the door and go for those cars passing out gospel tracks. They ain't going nowhere. 300 cars going by, coming right out of the mountains of West Virginia, all that cold. I said, don't sit there and cuss. Some of them sitting there, <laughs> nervous. Some cussing, got the radio going real loud. Boom, 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 the jungle music. I pass out golf. Say, hey, turn that thing down, man. Here, take this track. Read. Don't cuss. Read this track while you're sitting there. Oh, some of them know me. Hey, Brother Earl. How are you? You out here passing out track? I said, yeah, what are you doing besides cussing sitting here? As a servant. You know what? As a servant, I can do anything I please. And all I want to do is please my Lord and Master. That's it. That's it. Now listen. If I can do that, and I'm special about me, how about you? Huh? Lord, help these people to understand me. <laughs> Let them know what I'm trying to do. And I'm your servant. Shut up and do what God told you to do. Don't worry about it. I'm careful of people pat you on the back and don't tell them what they got in their hand. Yeah. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is our example. We want to mimic somebody. It should be him. You and I can't help but learn from each other. Well, don't try to be like me. I'm not going to try to be like you. Let God use you right where you are. Be a good servant, a bond slave, if you please. And say, Lord, it's hard. Tell him. He knows that. He never said it would be easy. But he did say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And, and, and bring your prejudices to him. Tell him. I had to tell him that. I really, it was hard. But I told him. I said, Lord, I still got some of that stuff in me from the old civil rights days and demonstration. It's there. And God, that's not right. And every now and then it pops up. That's why I say I don't watch fights. I've been in them too many times. <laughs> but just bow before God and say, Lord, here I am. I really want to be a good servant. My pride, well, God hates that. Get lifted up with pride. I hate it. So who do you hate? My own. And I hate yours. I noticed my wife and I were at the motel 
what we were talking about when we first got here. And uh, some of the folk looked at us as if they say, one of them in here. I was in a meeting one time and the guy said to me, we don't allow no black people in here. I said, I don't blame you, man. Find one, put him out. <laughs> I never sit in the front. I never sit in the back, brother. You're going to be embarrassed trying to throw me out from the front, not from the back. I'm not way it's convenient for you to be at the door. Uh-uh. Come all the way down front and get me, and you'll be embarrassed because I'm going to keep a whole lot of noise when you try to put me out. God help us. God help me. I, I want to be a good servant. I don't know how much time I've got left, but you know what? I want it to count for the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you, Lord, for letting me share my heart with these brothers and sisters. I praise you for the privilege. Lord, glorify yourself in us. May we be good and faithful servants. Through Jesus' come, in whose name we pray, we thanksgiving. Amen.